Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome. A small uh, comment. If you were looking forward to Kamil Glinka. Now, Gli Kamil Glinka uh, is originally scheduled um, in module three, right before lunch. Um, he's moved uh, until the morning um, on Friday. Uh, Professor Robert Pikas of Silesian University in Katowice uh, is chairing this session and a um, couple of uh, words before Robert starts speaking. The first um, report is a report on uh, the evaluation, some evaluation results. Uh, will be commented as organizers. We've given us ourselves this privilege to take slightly longer. Over to Robert. Thank, thank you very much for your kind invitation and pleasure and honor to run uh, session one. I don't anticipate much work. You are engaged, committed, and you are very participative. Now, we have three reports, three um, presentations. Um, yesterday, that was in a nutshell. Today, an extended version, two people, um, Eva Banaszek and Mateusz Błaszczek, uh, Katarzyna Kajdanek and Jacek Pluta will be talking to us about the evaluation process. Then uh, we'll be moving on to um, Ms. Ms. Zaldona Wiktorska-Świecka, again, uh, Wrocław. Uh, capital culture as a social investment and instrument of corporate uh, co-management and report or is, um, presentation number three Maciej Kowalewski of Szczecin games and how artists use supportive elements I don't want to take any more of your time and to the first set of reporters. Now, Eva and I are here um, at the start. The other part of our team is waiting in, a fl in flanks. Um, we do realize we won't be able to show everything to you, but you can actually upload uh, the four reports themed reports, and four of them will be available in English. Uh, you'll get um, information about this. What is the purpose of uh, this report? It's very much um, like yesterday's introduction uh, to yesterday's debate. We're going to give you an overall overall uh, description of the evaluation of um, e European capital of culture, general characteristics and uh, methodological context, and then and some sort of teasers of, of, the, um, of our survey. So participation, special weekends, understanding of culture, and extending the field of culture, um, uh, which techniques to use, and, and a short recap, what next? Uh, for those of you who attended yesterday's debate and yesterday's sessions, you probably it probably rings a bell. This slide this is a general, an overall description of characteristics of the European capital of culture and gives us puts us in the context of this evaluation. Now, the starting point for us, the assumption was that with the ECOs. ECOC. Uh, we had 2,000 of various cultural events over a calendar year. So it was a revival of cultural life in the city. Uh, there were new offers in terms of forms and methods how to get participate. And because there was more uh, offers or more propositions of leisure, how to spend your leisure time, this offer has been turned, it was turned into um, a competitive proposal. So uh, the quant 
quantitative impact of European capital of culture uh, somehow increase the participation in cultural events in general. Now, our main question was, um, was did the ECOC somehow contribute to uh, the uh, participation, um, the, the participation rate um, in the cultural event in the region, in Wrocław, not only affecting or having impacting the local population, but also incomers. Now, we were not really dealing with financial and, um, well, financial part of, of it. We were not asking the question how much Wrocław um, spent on, uh, on the project. We also avoided a question what the culture is about and how to understand artistic values and uh, if whatever was presented also reflected such artistic values. Uh, how were we looking for the answer? So we have some of the themes um, so the survey in terms of techniques, we had a regular um, uh, quantitative values, three series, then a regular internet, um, uh, a series of qualitative uh, surveys, uh, micro survey projects and you'll be able to listen to it. Um, you've already had a chance to listen to it. And there was a panel of the institutions of culture, the so-called terra incognita, that's what we, um, this is the title of the, one of the theme reports. Now, we wouldn't have been capable of doing it on our own. Um, there were a number of people and we liaised with um, uh, the Copernicus uh, University of Toruń and the Jagiellonian University of uh, Krakow. We also asked for some uh, support from Kamila Kaminska of the Institute of Educational Pedagogy and as well with uh, IMPART um, Festival um, IMPART office uh, Mm, with some valid Now, lessons, um, lessons that we learn somehow in the process of evaluation. We hope to be producing a certain text that will structure everything. Uh, we'd like to draw your attention uh, to the ECOC as the context of um, the context of a survey and AC, ECOC as the context in terms of participation in culture. Now, mm, uh, the participation is not really an obvious thing, and we had uh, uh, somehow mm, different views. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking uh, about the participation of culture in terms of attitudes, or should we ask uh, questions in such a way that we will get natural answers showing us the type of participation. Again, uh, we had a very mm, strong, um, uh, very strong, um, should we say, contention. Um, it's very different to ask about the participation in culture in the context of ECOC, um, bearing in mind the future evaluation. Uh, this is very fundamental, and we need to under, understand it. Now, the, um, again, the grading of the evaluation methods. We are talking about triangulation. Uh, sometimes we can't meet social public expectation as far as um, such surveys concerned. Sometimes we just ask questions. Is this survey representative? On many occasions, we are not able to do it by the book. Uh, we couldn't say that as a result of the quantitative survey, we, ha we got into the representative sample. We also ran this survey with some sort of um, support from the media. We tried 
to interview people, ask people in the street. So the main quantitative um, uh, action was uh, CATI, CATI, and um, a website questionnaire. These results are good, good enough, because they are coherent. If we look at the different results, uh, applying different methods, um, when these results are confronted and we can see certain cohesion, then we know it's good. We don't want the survey to be uh, directly representative, but we need to avoid the communication in which we simply convey the message that that's the only area within which we uh, operate. And then the respondent uh, itself, we have the audience, for example, um, on the occasion of the Great Awakening or this Wake Up project, if we streamline various events, just like today, via the website, now the problem of the participation and the generating the participation, and that's the process. Uh, we wanted to catch certain aspect by um, uh, uh, approaching respondents at different points of time. So we were doing that over one time. Now, quantitative results. Uh, you can see this table. Okay, I got it. Uh, one of the serious effects of the participation, uh, we would, could say that structural participation in culture will not work. So if there are different cultural competences um, and these competences are achieved through education, uh, this is something that works. So if we look um, at those participants who had held a degree, then obviously they were the dominating group in workshop in different complex forms or higher forms of, um, of events. Nothing has changed here if we look at it. Now the, uh, the economy, uh, the well-being, uh, welfare, those who um, are affluent, they will actually eat everything in the culture. So a better standard of living means better access to culture. What else? What else can we say about the participation in the perspective? Now we have the various classification of the events and um, from mass events via the uh, very private or paid for events, workshops, all different creative exercises in order to get people involved. We asked about uh, the type of event and we would uh, also use a grading scale. What do I want to say? The green uh, bar shows the highest level of intensity in terms of participation in culture. These people have the sort of universal profile, profile to take part in different, uh, and there were 14% of the participants that we included in our Keti, or Keti um, uh, uh, survey. Now, open, free access, mass events that draw large audiences, this ludic dimension of the EC. Um, OC, and this is one, probably one of the faces of the ECOC. Uh, yesterday we made this parallel about the forest and big tall trees in the forest. So we can see these big tall trees. And what was the accumulating effect? And now we can see by the type of event in time, first six months of the ECOC, red uh, um, is the second uh, six, the 
last six months and the after post factum. Uh, so we had a, the question, I never participated or I participated in everything. Our expectation uh, couldn't have been better uh, if we have eight, uh, even up to 11 types of events, we wanted them to be saturated to a greater extent. And um, passing on to, or moving on to other themes such as special weekends. I want to show we want to show via the internet um, interview who actually took part. The green belt, the green uh, uh, bar means uh, higher education. The proportion of sexes. Wrocław uh, culture is a woman, really. Uh, there was a w literary weekend and women dominated. Uh, in particular, those who actually uh, took the trouble of filling up the interview. And we want to write something about a female face of, um, of the culture. My final slide. Uh, Mateusz uh, mentioned the uh, uh, cognitive scale, a cognitive scale, we have a reference to literature, we have the impact of uh, um, experience, um, the impact of uh, novelty, added value, which means good, and uh, negative values would be uh, worse than the general. Now, uh, Reed Wrocław um, was with the weekend, the literary weekend, was sort of. We have the um, theatrical games, a niche event, and uh, reflection shows us um, my one, which is a huge diversion. Uh, we were able to spot it. Um, this is quantitative uh, data. How can we translate that into the qualitative understanding of the differences? And that's also subject to, to a debate. Can I hand over to Eva? I'm not sure whether I'm going to give you a sign, but I hope you, you will follow me. Now, let me uh, briefly tell you about two qualitative surveys um, uh, that we uh, ran as part of the ECOC evaluation in the year 2016. In the first place, uh, focus groups. Uh, we selected this as some sort of interview, a conversation, sorry, conversation with uh, residents of Wrocław, and the in-depth um, interviews, autonomous interviews, uh, with the organizers of culture in Wrocław people employed in different places. Let me start with the focus um, groups. Uh, well, that project, uh, we ran the project uh, over one year. We had the sort of three series, and we ran the three series over the time of uh, the ECOC. Uh, and one series was run after the completion of the project. The problem, the main problem, uh, concentrated along two axes. Um, so the attitudes to culture, participation and understanding, and the other axis, the perception of the ECOC. So this empiric material is quite convincing that uh, the phenomena tested uh, or uh, studied were pretty complex. So we decided to use an 
mm, an archipelag because uh, we can uh, we deal here with a number of islands number of islands it's like an archipelago and uh, these islands of or islands of culture uh, genetically are in a way a whole but there are certain barriers uh, between them from what we found over the survey we picked up one element as a group we wanted to uh, somehow outline the map uh, map of this archipelagos it was the ways culture is treated it is a subjective um, choice but we believe that this element gives a good background to understand and construe uh, the social perception of ECOC and the way culture is treated also uh, somehow defines the ways of participation can you see sacrum yes you can see sacrum uh, culture as sacrum the way we treat culture culture is identified with high culture the values aesthetic and um, uh, aesthetic values uh, that give us deep experience this experience aesthetic experience should trigger personal uh, development and the experience of transcendence and uh, consequently cultural values are precious they are out treasured uh, on many occasions respondents ha uh, um, stress the fact that um, culture may not be understood very well it's not comprehensible um, on many occasions those who actually receive so the recipient is not always able of decoding um, an event or whatever experience is offered but on the other hand pa participation one's participation in the culture uh, is seen as a duty and reflects certain attitude or life standards so what makes people make people start giving explanation or reasons which the experience is not necessarily pleasant it may be challenging it may call for effort and you are supposed to make an effort or even get prepared for contact for a contact with culture those people who treat culture like this are really very they have this reverent attitude therefore sacrum sacrum as the attitude of treating culture approaching culture it is something special celebrated something non un, well not common something arranged for but specialized institutions and the way we actually contact culture the offer um, so the way we we contact culture takes a form as ritual the form of ritual now culture as a prize recognition a token of appreciation we divide the existence into two spheres the one of duty and leisure culture is part of leisure so participation uh, means that this is part of consumption but it is also um, going away from your duties mm. this is not high culture but you still access culture 
uh, through the intermediation of various institutions. If you do something at home, if you read a book, if you watch a film at home on your own, or amateur photography is not associated with culture. The um, form of participation is subject to individual preferences. Um, from everyday life to an event of culture, you need to meet all the expectations in terms of family, in terms of your professional life, you, meet, you need to meet all the criteria, and then you're free to access culture, to enjoy culture. Um, in this way, there is some sort of self-exclusion from culture. If one doesn't take part in culture, it means that you don't deserve culture, uh, the fact that you don't uh, take part in a cultural event means that you are simply busy, hardworking, not necessarily to be condemned. Um, we may deserve a prize in terms of culture, but if we can't cope and deserve a prize, it's nothing, it doesn't make us anything worse. Um, and um, a catalyst, culture as the catalyst. So culture treated as a medium, as a measure to gain uh, something uh, else. It's an opportunity to mm, promote social inclusion. It leads to two goals, and the two goals are linked to different types of inclusion. It's one thing is manifesting uh, the fact that you are part of community. The other, uh, the other one, the other goal is part of the social life. So this is leisure, and this is, in a way, executing various identities, pers private personal identity. And um, culture as a reservoir. Uh, culture is a resource of, um, a resource for the spiritual and cognitive development in order to develop one's personality, enrich one's personality, should be stimulating intellectually, aesthetically, artist, artistically, it's source of um, emotion and pleasure. Um, you can see, and it's a nice, nice form of pleasure. Uh, well, obviously, we can see here high or pop culture, but there is no grading, no better or worse culture. Art that helps you to develop um, yourself is treated as the same way as art, as a form of entertainment, and a different form of culture. You are allowed to reach out for it in order to, um, depending on, on your mood and on what you want to do, what you want to um, satisfy. And the next slide. Um, um, now, I've run a number of interviews with the organizers uh, of culture. Uh, I diversified the various institutions, and we agreed to call them non-government institutions. These are collective communal communal uh, projects, and uh, these um, actors are well established um, with some sort of consolidated um, experience and strengthened, um, uh, strengthened positions. On many occasions, uh, these actors uh, not necessarily created culture, but uh, facilitated certain cultural events, provided somehow cater uh, for cultural event. Now, this division uh, seems a label, maybe it's a very simple or simplistic way of um, trying of somehow putting a structure over the cultural uh, picture of Wrocław. So what happens here? Uh, what we did, we reviewed the material, and there are so many themes, and decided to pick up 
two themes. On one side, um, this is the reflection of uh, um, what happens is that people of culture and people, sorry, people who work in uh, in the culture, they um, notice that the ECOC uh, projects uh, failed to cope um, uh, with certain conflicts um, that are discernible in Wrocław. Uh, and we have such uh, uh, weaknesses, center and uh, outskirts festivalization and defestivalizations, the European aspect, the Polish aspect, and uh, locality, the local aspect. So there was an expectation uh, that uh, culture may go beyond uh, the center. Um, uh, some people somehow commute. So if things happen in the center of the city, then uh, 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 there were various projects and uh, the various actions that uh, uh, were conflicting and those actors also got involved in many activities which then resulted in uh, something uh, that was against of what they wanted to achieve. So the, what happened eventually, the center remain the center, the outskirts remain the outskirts. So there was a fiasco, there was a failure. Now the second thing, the expectation, the original expectation was that all those events, or there would be a number, a greater number of events with the long-term follow-up um, impact. So what they saw, they saw this one-off type of event, this ludic type of event, uh, only few could be identified as long term. So uh, that's what we call festivalization or defestivalization of festivity and defestivity of culture. Uh, so, and the third thing, European, Polish, local. Uh, and again, uh, those people uh, complained about the European aspect, European artists being in focus rather than Polish or local artists. So that was the complaint. And the second area, um, the institutional pattern of culture and extending the field of culture. I used the Gdańsk research and uh, the Gdańsk experience because the European capital of culture in all the dimensions that you can see, European capital of culture was able to contribute with a little bit. Mm, uh, this the, one of the dimensions where the ECC, uh, ECOC contributed to was um, the um, the social dimension. Well, thank you. That was all. Well, thank you very much uh, for this uh, uh, writing together, the uh, joint writing, and thank you for the time discipline. Uh, uh, on the last slide, there were links to the reports, as you know, as you, as, as you can see, I, I think. Well, once again, we encourage you to read the report. Okay, uh, another presentation of uh, Mrs. Aldona Wiktorska. On, uh, on the European uh, capital of culture as an investment. Uh, let me start with a good morning. And I want to thank the organizers first for taking up this problem. Of the evaluation of the program of the ECC and the possibility of showing, of showing you the results of uh, our polls and surveys uh, conducted by my team. The first reflection, well, it's not a reflection a question. How much time, time do I have? 15 minutes, okay. So the first reflection is that uh, on this, although uh, on a daily basis we work very close together, because in the majority of cases uh, the circle of researchers uh, who 
develop the results uh, presented to you yesterday and today. These are my faculty colleagues, uh, but I didn't know much about the results, and I promise I will get acquainted with the results. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, it's maybe good that we have parallel research uh, on in terms of evaluation, because uh, I, from my perspective as a, a political scientist and management scientist. Uh, well, that's my first reflection after listening to the presentation this morning. They um, supplement each other, complement each other very well, um, but uh, they let me also understand uh, my results, our results, and we have looked at the ECC from a completely different point of view. We were not interested, firstly, in, in this enterprise as such. Uh, taking place at uh, a specific location and in a specific time. We were interested in uh, a system change and the longevity of uh, the change in, uh, in the management of the city. We were looking in our research for something that permanently has changed. Mm, following the ECC, I mean here the management of public matters, the public issues and problems. This is very complex, I think, but uh, but we were encouraged uh, by the trends in management in the European Union. That's why we reached out uh, to use uh, institutional standards and requirements of the European Union. The European Union gave us some hints uh, about in which directions institutions uh, should uh, go and adapt uh, to, in the management of the city so that as to correspond and, and, and manage certain directions of development. Uh, we also had independent sponsors. Uh, this research was no, not co-funded uh, by the municipality, so we were free to look for different aspects that we make dub innovation in evaluation research. Uh, the first grant has been finished. Uh, just uh, it, it finished just several weeks ago. In terms of the program Horizon 2020, which is uh, funded by one of our which is, fun, which, which is the funding source of one of our projects, and uh, we will finish uh, this project on the 20th of October. So this here um, is the first possibility of showing our results, our conclusions that we have uh, gained in the last uh, several years. However, dealing with the problems of the ECC in the context of co-management uh, has a wider time uh, work, uh, framework. We have conducted this uh, since 20, 2008, when the initiative appeared to gain this title for Wrocław. And we also know that this will not be a closed adventure with, with evaluation. Those two projects that I have mentioned uh, encourage us to sort of play around with evaluation, because when preparing the presentation, for today, I just want to briefly mention also something about the methodology. I just want to focus on uh, conclusions, of course, when the time uh, does not run out. But uh, what we have discovered, what we want to, to do is to to try out new methods in evaluation uh, in, uh, in the field of uh, municipal management uh, in the context of the European Union standards, uh, tracking uh, changes. We use uh, also the recommendations of the European Union in uh, using um, contractual evaluation. So we will try to find out what would have happened if we uh, had not had the ECC in Wrocław, uh, uh, whether we would have arrived at the same results uh, like after this project of ours. Well, we are um, serious scientists, so we had to go through the literature. Um, we had to look for certain models uh, that are as close as possible to our ideas and to suggest our own model that would be helpful in interpreting the material that we have collected here locally. Um, the, the most optimum model of local management seemed to us to be a model which combines certain threads that my colleagues mentioned. Uh, from the political scientist's point of view, we concent concentrated on the entities participating in the process of shaping the vision of the ECC and then later on in the uh, joint performance of this vision. One objection, one reservation, however, because I think here in this point we differ from our sociologist uh, colleagues. We define the ECC differently in terms of the time framework. Is the ECC for us is not the final year only, 2016. 2016 was one of the elements of our research. We were more interested in 
the fact of getting this title within the national competition and then the official granting of the title of the European Capital of Culture by the European Union. So what we, truly speaking, we call Wrocław the ECC. Uh, I mean, anything that has happened in local management uh, from uh, this title is uh, dubbed by us to be the ECC. This is important to understand the content. So not only the entities that were invited starting from 2011 to cooperate, not only those were the ones that had some impact on the decisions all around the ECC, not only the decision-making processes, another element, but also the political effects. Uh, the effects of uh, cooperation and uh, the effects, the impacts on the decision-taking process. My presentation relates to the four elements. I have a pointer here, even. Uh, four, four elements, meaning uh, we were interested in innovation, uh, covering the whole local management, municipal management system in the regional context. Wrocław has a capital of Lower Silesia, the quality of innovation in co-management, municipal co-management, sub-regional, I mean the agglomeration, and in the regional context, also innovation in terms of uh, methods of uh, governing, as well as the products, innovations, innovation in services. How has the relation between the city users changed and those who take the political decisions? Uh, to be brief, um, just to explain certain astonishment that you may have uh, looking at uh, what I have written here, innovation in service, innovation in products, uh, and I'm talking about co-management, co-government co uh, in the regional context. This is not an error. This is a very ambitious goal, but because looking for innovation in local management uh, in view to the co-management, multi-level management, we also hoped that whatever would happen in Wrocław would have some impact on the other zones of regional management. Uh, the, the definition of culture, um, well, that's a, a little bit joyfully, but uh, it, it was really, uh, I really liked what my pre-speaker said. We were looking for an understanding of culture in local development, but we called it the combined model 9-0. Uh, this is the basic, the most basic, the most traditional model, archaic model of understanding of culture, the consumer-based uh, uh, orientation and understanding, the participation model to zero, the production approach, where we say that uh, we not only participate in culture passively, but also actively. Uh, we contribute to the production of uh, culturally tainted goods, and also what is recommended straightforwardly by the European Commission, meaning for ECCs, the integration approach. Having this in mind, uh, that we are in in, in, in a period of transformation, uh, you yourselves and uh, the city of Rotswaf, we assumed uh, that, um, that uh, there would be a, a mixture of those two uh, approaches, a combination of those, but the ambitious task was that since we want to use the ECC as a pretext to change the management of the city, the integration approach 4.0 would be addressed mostly. Uh, whether this uh, has come true, well, I mean, this hybrid uh, nature of, uh, of our findings and the, 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 this uh, parallel of, of an archipelago, that's, that's the best reflection of what we have found also from the point of view of the political sciences. Uh, by empirical research, by interviews, we uh, have carried out well, we have used different methods. Uh, we have done quite a, a work monitoring local media because we came to the conclusion that the communication, uh, the political communication, would be very useful f for us. Uh, it, it didn't turn out to be so, really, because the policy of communication uh, of ECC by local management was a little bit different. But when materials appeared in, in, in the press, they were sponsored mainly. They were, they were not precise enough to, for us to use them as data sources. However, we came to the conclusion that it would be difficult to examine the reality that we are looking for where we have two narratives. 
Uh, I, I'm doing this on purpose uh, when, when quoting. I, 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 I don't see here Director Mai. I, I, I'm quoting here one of his uh, uh, sentences which uh, strengthens our um, trends of differently define the, the expectations from ECC. Uh, munici the municipality expects it's more visitors, more participants in the final year. Uh, five minutes left. I want to show you uh, everything that I will not be able to say, but you will be able to, to read it in the, in the article. But uh, before that, uh, several photographs which confirmed how difficult it is to find out from using the materials uh, made available to the public whether we are really keen to have people participate, to include people, whether we want a new quality of the decision-taking process and innovation. Uh, the multitude of events formally with the logo of ECC or independent events which uh, were performed f starting from 2011, the changing marketing concepts strong accents on infrastructure, material infrastructure, because we, if we were to hold a lecture about what uh, material stuff was left after ECC, we might uh, have come to different conclusions uh, than those uh, that uh, we are looking for in the context of social investment uh, that uh, arose through the ECC. Uh, we researched into the financial aspects, into the economic uh, aspects, unlike our colleagues, and uh, we know that there would have been more social investment if uh, several factors uh, uh, would have entailed. Um, certain events all around ECC which uh, were not part of the project itself, however, had uh, a strong impact on the way how the project was uh, enforced and managed, a controversial debate uh, about the Roma people, controversies uh, connected with, uh, with some of the media campaigns of uh, ECC, uh, which was found to be very exaggerated. So this was what we were looking for in terms of innovation. And yet here, uh, another situation which seems to be very difficult, I'm looking at, at my chair, uh, whether I can continue. I have two minutes to go. Okay, so let us talk about our findings. So it's not like, like after ECC, nothing is left, so to say. Uh, it, for sure, it's like this. Uh, in order to, to find out uh, whether ECC has had a permanent impact, uh, a permanent change, we need to come back to the research uh, within the next two years and then after four years. What we found out is a higher awareness, civic awareness, more involvement of the people, uh, the broad knowledge uh, of uh, about the so-called civic budget uh, has to be mentioned, but the civic budget was not a project uh, which was um, advertised by the ECC. It was a parallel uh, initiative, and uh, within our contract contractual evaluation, we will find out whether the uh, uh, raised uh, civic awareness and uh, raised uh, involvement of people in NGOs and uh, municipalities, whether this is the effect of ECC. We hold it's not. It's, it's the result of completely different political uh, impact factors. But what evidently is the result of ECC uh, includes microgrants. I know you have talked about it, you will be talking about it. This is a very good practice. However, after two or four years, we will be able to say what the scale is, what the range is, what the reach is, and what how permanent the solution is. In terms of innovation, in terms of um, working methods, we, ha we haven't found any innovation, really. The communication and cooperation with stakeholders like uh, civic uh, organizations. When you look at it, uh, well, the, the some, uh, only now is, there is something changing. In June uh, this year, after ECC, there was the first Congress of Civic Organizations here in Wrocław, but we do not associate it, do not relate it to ECC directly. There are lots of findings, and I promise they will be listed and uh, 
uh, and, and substantiated in my article, in my paper. I don't want to go into detail. I'm available here. I'm, I'm for the discussion. Uh, but if uh, my chairperson comes to it, I will show you just two slides just to, just to, to make a summary. We want to leave some time for, for, for a discussion. Just to pay attention to the two slides. Uh, firstly, if we change institutions within the ECC, we do it uh, because some subordinate, uh, some some superior provisions uh, by the European Commission, some requirements of the European Commission, uh, let us do it. Uh, so that's the superior aspect of organisation. Then the change through culture. Culture is defined very narrowly by us as uh, activities by cultural institutions, and this is underscored by the municipality. The lacks coordination at the central level. The central level is seen by us very directly. The ECC does not seem to be a very important flagship project for Poland. It's a local project which has consequences of itself when sort of trying to find out uh, uh, or translating it into social investment. And uh, we also lack very uh, standard uh, tools uh, like the strategy of the development of the city, the strategy for culture, the strategy for Wrocław 2030. Only now are they starting to be developed in a model way, uh, because with the participation of, uh, of, um, of uh, the citizens. But uh, we say, we hold, it's not the impact of the ECC, it is the result of the raising awareness, civic awareness. And <clears throat> these are the questions that we are posing ourselves, and we will be looking for answers together. Now, 10 minutes for a discussion. Thank you very much for your contribution. and. Uh, now the last contribution, Szczecin, uh, the floor is yours, please. Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, we, we need to wait a while uh, before the presentation starts. I want to talk about the money. I want to talk uh, about what the artists uh, say, uh, about what, what the money does with the people. Uh, well, this is uh, this all costs, of course, uh, because our research uh, about different costs, uh, the representatives of the artistic uh, circles, they uh, were talking about uh, maybe not directly uh, financial aspects, but uh, they were talking about the limited funding available. We uh, researched into it uh, from a completely different perspective. We had a research about the role of the artistic circles in the local milieus and uh, it was about the response whether the artists uh, cooperate with uh, social uh, aid, uh, social support uh, network and do they get involved into the rehabilitation uh, systems and uh, do they help uh, uh, with solving uh, uh, social issues. So that was a little bit different project. We used three methods, uh, that's the analysis of um, uh, the found data, uh, interviews, individual and group interviews in different municipalities all around Szczecin province. These were uh, interviews with the representatives of uh, artists, uh, but also social um, uh, aid uh, people, uh, social care people. And uh, the picture that we have generated, uh, this is what I want to present to you after the termination of the first stage of the project. The most important notion was the uh, creative uh, circle, let us call it like this. Uh, it's quite commonly used, but uh, not so often defined. We are using this, uh, so this uh, notion, uh, artistic circles, but this is just by intuition, and we want to make it more precise by showing that the artistic circle is a community, social community, incorporating not only the artists representing the individual fields of uh, art, but also those who start uh, up uh, social circles, uh, circulations of culture, recipients, uh, local government, uh, 
funders uh, and it seemed to us and we could confirm it with our data that the artistic circle should be seen as a whole intertwined and uh, interconnecting and, and having impact on each other uh, within a, a given location. And so let me now talk about three things, about the money and the funding as a social fact, uh, which means a reality that you do not discuss uh, straightforwardly, but uh, it is a reference point uh, quite often. It's a reference point that you have to fight, uh, to struggle to get to, uh, you can reach it uh, after some research. The first thing is uh, the way how you talk about the money at the local level. Uh, the second thing is the interdependence of the funding, or the, the dependence on the funding organization, funding sources. Uh, they have different sources of funding from the municipalities, from the provincial level, from the national level, from different uh, all Polish programs, but also international programs. And the third one is the risk calculation, a strategy that artists take up, uh, take on to minimize uh, risks uh, of being um, made redundant or getting your subsidy cut away or, or having a conflict with the local government or the artists from other circles. So the first thing, talking about the money, I, I always refer to the quality survey notion, that that's, this is a notion of the closed uh, uh, awareness uh, circle, this is about the awareness of dying. There is a story where the patient is, uh, is on the bed and he doesn't know that he's dying and all the family and uh, the, the medical staff they know. And the patient does not have any hint that uh, all the others know uh, his situation which uh, has a decisive impact on the relation between them. And that's the situation experienced by our researchers uh, going into the field. So these were young people, um, not polluted by cynicism, like I have. Uh, they have an idealist, uh, idealized uh, picture of reality and uh, and uh, they haven't uh, had not yet discovered a certain word and uh, after uh, after this uh, they uh, they, 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 the context changed into a context of uh, doing as if, you know, the, 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 like you don't have to sell yourself for the money, like pretending. The, 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 the first moment, uh, the, I, I would call it the, the, the closed context of awareness, uh, where you always pretend. So, uh, I, I want to talk about the deformations of competitions at the local level and uh, regional level. This is quite important because uh, the research uh, shows that people talk about it in the differently in individual uh, interviews and group interviews. This is a methodology problem, ethical problem. What should you do with uh, contributions uh, uh, that people tell you off the record? Please do not record this uh, magic or they tell you, well, the matter is different and uh, uh, you have a debate in the conference and then during the dinner people will tell you something completely different. And uh, what, what should you do with this? Uh, should you keep them for yourself? Should you include them in your research? We normally keep them for ourselves, of course. But uh, there emerged uh, the threat of competitions. There was a question about how people use uh, competition sources uh, or, 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 or competitions and the, the response was uh, ah you know you know exactly how it is with uh, with competitions and the young researchers doesn't know why they laugh at you and why uh, is there a situation that everybody knows how it works and they don't want to tell you and only after a while uh, this gets uh, clearer um, the artists will tell you that they adapt the reality to the requirements of the competition that the emerging financial uh, framework uh, connects with the commemoration of some anniversary of the death of some uh, some uh, important creator. They are only a cover-up for, 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 for certain activities, uh, just, you know, the, because you need to have something on your calendar, um, uh, event calendar. Another threat in the context of awareness is how you manage. Uh, how you, how, what, I mean, what I mean is taking up uh, certain strategies by artistic circles uh, just to sort of uh, uh, manage in, in a situation where you have limited funds or such competition situation. 
Uh, another thing that appears in uh, smaller uh, municipalities is uh, like drawing from money that is uh, devoted to some other fields uh, rather than culture, like for example alcoholism, um, uh, alcoholism, fight against alcoholism, money collected from every bottle. And uh, as you know, out of this uh, fund, they finance different uh, events, picnics, uh, festivals, uh, to prevent people from getting uh, addicted. And uh, well, you said it yesterday at the research at the national level um, about uh, fest local festivals, uh, local celebrations, uh, days of municipalities. Uh, there, there is the same problem. People want to participate in events like these and they sell very well at the municipal level as cultural products independent of uh, regardless of uh, whether this is a local municipality or big municipality the profit from being t together among others is uh, is is a high one so uh, the government uses this trend and spends money on it because they see profits also artists do the same of course uh, there is the story that you exaggerate with uh, with uh, with your descriptions uh, in the application to get uh, 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 the funding for for your activity and the artists uh, after a long time after a longer time they start talking willingly about uh, how the infrastructure is financed from from different uh, sources that are devoted to other objectives uh, and this uh, happens without any plan and the question is what will happen with this infrastructure this is these are the questions that they normally pose during the interview so what emerges is a world where funding is an element of uh, of a game uh, artists uh, participate in the game but also the the funders as well they don't want to talk about this openly to you everybody knows this is like this but it, it is not presented to the wider public uh, there is a lot of uh, Mm, pretending. Uh, this, this managing strategy that I mentioned is not the only strategy of overcoming the limitations because uh, artistic circles in, lo in smaller uh, uh, municipalities uh, compensate for it uh, by creating uh, informal local uh, social capital, informal contacts with other artists from other uh, municipalities, local uh, contacts to local government, to the mayor, and they try to present how important they are, how specific uh, the artistic art activities are. So these are the strategies. And now we face the following situation. And yesterday in the debate, uh, it uh, appeared as well. Um, sometimes uh, self-government um, is, uh, is a, a, a poor... Uh, a, a poor funder of culture of sorts uh, uh, by by uh, uh, you know by distributing uh, money in in a little bit chaotic way. On the other hand, uh, local government uh, uh, operates as an umbrella, giving the artists freedom in a space, uh, and they cannot uh, get this in, 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 the, in the other fields. Uh, so self-government is a counterweight against uh, certain centralized tendencies, taking away uh, the local autonomy, taking away the freedom of the artist, so it's a sort of umbrella. Um, that comes back to a topic which uh, for some time has not been so important, seemed to not so important, uh, uh, the tensions between the four uh, funding uh, uh, sources, uh, the municipal, uh, uh, local, uh, uh, regional and uh, national. There are different sources, um, city sources, uh, provincial sources, or, cent or, or there are central institutions uh, which are the sources. And the social games between the artists, uh, which uh, normally are taking place um, uh, well, there is a lot of reservations and objections. Uh, you like somebody, you don't like somebody. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is also connected with uh, the, the funding sources. If we have to deal with central institutions like ministries, uh, this uh, conflict deepens uh, because there is a director coming to the local municipality. And... 
uh, only sometimes uh, this relation is good. So there is a, well, different situation in smaller uh, municipalities and bigger municipalities because uh, uh, in smaller municipalities, the artists are um, uh, a sort of uh, uh, highlight, let's say. Uh, local government is proud of them. Uh, they show off um, the artists. So the artists have different roles. They are not only creators, but also organizers, uh, commentators. So this is a local resource. Uh, in bigger municipalities, uh, the, the, the artists are complaining. They are part of the political game uh, that relates not only to culture, but also to other fields of uh, social life. Um, somebody said here, uh, in, in a big city, the artists, the artists are always offended, seem to be offended of sorts. Uh, the social position uh, in the big city is created also by not affirming the, 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 the reality, but not confirming the reality. If you complain about the way how local government communicates with the, the citizens, that's the way how you show your own knowledge, your professionalism. So it's just good to talk badly about the mayor in certain circles, about uh, the, the, the local um, uh, uh, MPs. That's, that's, that's uh, a sort of fashion. Uh, that's why also the artists in, in bigger cities, they, they have narrow specializations. However, when commenting the social and political life, their perspective and uh, uh, pretended field of competence widens. After some time, after the research, uh, after some time of your, of your research, there emerges the threat or, 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 or the, the phenomenon that uh, there is a certain system of uh, connections between local government and the artists. And now the question must be posed uh, how the artists, how creative circles uh, manage local uh, systems and local arrangements. Uh, local arrangements quite often mean a monopoly for certain areas of uh, the municipal life. Uh, the same artists uh, will be invited to the same event, the same band. Uh, so this is uh, about contesting uh, local um, uh, artistic circles. Uh, we uh, analyzed uh, uh, artists who do not talk to each other just because the other party is uh, sort of connected with the mayor. Uh, there is another situation. If you cannot uh, get a position in the local municipality, you just try to find out and to make your position uh, outside of the local municipality just to get rid of your limitations. But this is a much more seldom strategy. The strategy consisting, consisting in rejecting local subsidies. Uh, an artist may say, I don't take any money from them just because they have a, a very unclear policy towards culture, but also uh, toward uh, uh, the society as a whole. Now, uh, to sum up, what criteria are taken into account by the artists uh, to avoid the risk of uh, having your subsidies cut or, or being... Uh, uh, overseen. Uh, so the the, the 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 first question is the question whether we use uh, budgetary funds or project funds. Project funds are high risk funds. Uh, such funds are paid later. The cycle of settlements uh, of information about the execution about the indicators is longer. The second thing is the content. Uh, of course, it is safe to to distribute traditional content. Uh, however, it is dangerous to have some avant-garde uh, intentions because they may not be understood well. Uh, they may be commented in a bad way. Maybe the subsidy is cut because something is really not understandable. And then the independence of the artists. Uh, uh, artists uh, will tell you that it is better to, to do your stuff independently from uh, the others because you cannot uh, find any agreement with the others, so the, effect, uh, the expected effect of synergy is rather seldom. Also, what is dangerous is uh, are, uh, repeatable events with the same guests, uh, with the same program, and uh, more risky are innovative activities, of course. What is the cost, then, on the last slide? The limitation of the artistic freedom, just because you have to uh, 
be subordinated to, to a grant or people may say I would uh, invite somebody from abroad or from some other uh, cities but uh, our government uh, dislikes him so I will not do it uh, the organizers of cultural life and that's the second aspect they are aware that they need to combine different uh, meet different uh, requirements low culture versus uh, high culture and another strategy another cost is not to get uh, local governments cross because of your content and because of your uh, financial risks and the fourth thing is mm, uh, consenting to to limiting your budget I know cities where uh, culture creators uh, just um, accept uh, that uh, there will be just one flagship event or two flagship events and the majority of funds will be spent on such flagship events. However, since we are uh, uncomfortable, uh, since we make ourselves uncomfortable to the local governments and they may, <coughs> may just push us away, that's why we do not do, not do this. Okay? We have some time for, for a discussion. Well, I think half an hour for co coffee break. I think we can borrow some money from the coffee break. And uh, the time for debate, the time for asking questions, discussion, comments. And let's start with questions. Uh, if we have any time, then we'll ask you for comments as well. Anyone, anyone interested or anyone keen to ask a question? Now, your evaluation seems very exciting, and I understand that you focus on the impact of the ECOC, so the events. Um, are you considering to include the substitution um, if, uh, phenomenon that uh, there are certain events that happen anyway or you can actually label certain uh, events as ECOC even if they would have happened anyway. And then we say that we increase the participation of local communities of visitors or international visitors. Well, it doesn't mean that uh, ECOC um, has drew the audience away, attracted the audience away uh, from certain events that uh, had been frequented anyway. So maybe people consume the culture anyway. They simply jump from one project to the other. They move or shift. Would you like to reply now or shall we take more questions? More questions. Well, what I can uh, answer to this part of your question, yes, uh, I've talked to people who work for, the, for institutions of culture or any uh, institutions that we roughly called non-government or non-governmental. They uh, noticed and uh, recorded the sort of outflow of being uh, in their own way. They simply cleaned their uh, calendar and they just didn't want to collide with the calendar proposed by ECOC. They just wanted to avoid a situation where there is competition. They didn't want to lose people because of the coincidence. They coped by uh, somehow including their events into the ECOC and they were quite aware of that. They understood this phenomenon. So I can confirm that this phenomenon took place. But the way I was working, I wouldn't be able uh, to assess or diagnose uh, this, uh, uh, sorry, assess or grade of, um, this phenomenon. ECOC, uh, in a way, managed uh, this risk to some extent 
somehow incorporated T-Mobile New Horizons, for example. This is one of the examples. They simply included them into ECOC. Now, did ECOC steal the audience. Uh, we could simply, we should run a survey year in, year out. Um, Mobile, uh, New Horizons, they, they do the surveys and they know what happened in the ECOC. They knew, know what happened before ECOC and after ECOC. So we could use their figures or their data as they will be made available later, and then try to draw a conclusion. Other institutions, uh, they are in a certain uh, reporting, but I don't, I doubt there is uh, enough information. May I just add, Mateusz, quite rightly, Oh, Mateusz is good saying things at all. Uh, you, you, in a way, anticipated today's, today's debate. The um, quantitative uh, measurements, the quantitative results, can you repeat? Just the conclu a conclusion, we try not to present a classic evaluation. We, we, we did have volumes, we did have, uh, quantities, but uh, the extending of, of the field of culture, we wanted to understand that. And we knew that there were different categories of events and um, large events would draw large audiences and we could see that clearly over the special uh, weekends. Uh, but we didn't want to lose the perspective of the so-called workers of culture. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to find a common denominator. It's easier to talk about certain areas, very much like al archipelagos of culture, and find the common denominator. But we feel we understand better what happened, and it's important that we need to interpret certain um, quantitative data, uh, look at them uh, through the cultural, um, from the cultural angle. This is one of the things that Jacek mentioned. We saw the phenomenon, but we can't say, we can't describe it in detail. Now, yesterday, at the time of the debate, a question was asked about conflicts and the visions uh, resulting from money, so money conflicts. And I felt I was to, uh, expected to answer, but I didn't answer the question because in my, from my survey, from my questionnaires, I could see the presence, but nurse, I could see about it with me. There was no one pretty interested. I can now have a recollection of maybe three conversations that people to some extent were willing to talk, but they had their own control not to talk much. Some other questions. Two more questions. A lady. Good morning. And a question uh, to Professor Wiktor Skaświęcka. This, um, this survey, this study, is, is, the survey is, is really a long-term one. You say uh, 2011, 2017, the four levels of co-management, um, development management, etc. So uh, what conclusions have you drawn so far? Uh, what, can you see the change and how can you describe the change between 
as a result of ECOC and the implementation of the process, preparation of ECOC, the, the management, the completion, uh, were there any changes in the cultural policy decision-making process? Well, can we expect more efficiency, distribution or redistribution of culture? Thank you very much for your question. Um, as scholars and researchers, uh, we, we have uh, the sort of trend not to speak directly, uh, but at least would like to keep to the line. Um, very briefly, taking a shortcut in, in, in answering your question, um, we did not in our survey, uh, we were aware when we were structuring the uh, research model, and but we knew that the goal would be difficult to achieve, to be achieved. Um, but we were ambitious because obviously we're not objective about Wrocław. It's a huge restraint for any researcher because we've got used to the myth of Wrocław, the greatness, the multi cultural aspect um, as the city users, as the beneficiaries, as the residents. So there was emotional reason or rationale, if we may say so. Uh, we were not objective. We also looked at the other ECOC projects completed project, but we wanted to look at those projects that were recognized by the Commission and the residents as successful, having good impact and making good contribution to the development of urban communities and cities. So that is how we looked at the story of success or history of success of Wrocław. And uh, looking at this, at the pragmatic team, we said, yes, Wrocław can afford to use the ECOC as a flag project at the national level, as a um, medium to, uh, to make a change, make a difference. Obviously, uh, we we can't say it was a total failure and nothing is left here, no lessons learned in terms of management, but there is, to some extent, there is something. Um, I've, I've arranged for several seminars in various circles, so there is knowledge, awareness, but also maybe some nostalgia and uh, maybe disappointment. Well, obviously, um, the ECOC won't happen to Wrocław anymore because it's only once in your lifetime that it happens, um, the lifetime of, of a city. But we want the philosophy of ECOC to hang, in a way, out with a city, to be with a city. Uh, there is no qualitative change in the management style as far as the EOC impact is concerned. So the stakeholders are treated as they were treated. Uh, the ECOC, uh, at least we, didn't see any breakthrough in the institutional solutions. Micro grants may be seen as a watershed or, or this sort of new thing or difference, but it, there's nothing innovative about it from the European angle. The, the so-called um, the kids of the blocks, um, uh, local communities, uh, yes, there is some goodness. Uh, we've done it, if you looked into the strategies, local strategies, and the, the so-called revitalization of the um, uh, communal uh, uh, space um, in the residential, so the so-called estate projects. Mm, maybe the dozen of those estates 
statement by Space for Young People. Um, Wrocław may not have been able to achieve this, to complete those projects without the ECOC. The question is a bit complex. Uh, I only uh, replied to the urban theme. Uh, there is a perspective, central perspective and national perspective. I would like to talk, I'd love to talk about it over coffee with you. I would like to ask if you use any differentiation between the understanding of participation in evaluation, for example, according to a participatory letter, because maybe it's lost now in translation, but the audience involvement is generally the lowest level of participation, and I follow how European capitals of culture, cities and evaluators struggling to prove participation because it's approached more like a widening of participation and I would like to ask whether you have a focus on the deepening of participation and where culture is understood as a co-creation which can lead to cultural sustainability. Bo tu musimy chyba się odpowiedzią podzielić, prawda? Bo państwo też o partycypacji mówiliście. To jak Krótko w tym punkcie. Now very tak. briefly, yes, the classical participation ladder uh, was applied to the local conditions and in being aware of the fact that here and now we need a good, there is a good consolidation of something which is known as tokenism and we, uh, we really hope that through the European capital of culture we, we would be able to climb the ladder uh, co-governance uh, 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 and co-decision making would be a partnership and we were looking for that. Uh, from what we found, uh, we did not leave the perspective of tokenism. Now a question to Eva. Uh, do you have anything about participation? Uh, participation la ladder. So... Now, because we had so many uh, research themes and survey themes, the participation appeared as one of the categories in various projects, but uh, it was used directly as one of the research um, uh, methods, and that was... Uh, Yes, entrance from the background uh, uh, in this project, it was used. My colleague uh, who uh, ran the survey is going to deliver his report tomorrow. And this is the theme of our uh, evaluation, where we found a participation, the, the evaluation of the project used the category of participation as a factor um, success or failure factor. I do agree that uh, as far as the other surveys were concerned, in particular when we use uh, quanti uh, quantitative uh, methods, we uh, put an equation mark uh, between the participation understood as, as simply um, passive, um, passive uh, participation. Just one more sentence. Uh, in my uh, survey, in my study, I did not use this category, but in many questionnaires, many interviews that we did, I can remember that uh, this was uh, a goal goal of the ECOC, one of the goals of the ECOC. Um, when I was talking about the three areas of conflict, or, um, uh, the three types of conflicts, we, we all referred to uh, the question, is it possible 
or not possible for people to actively participate, to use culture um, as a medium, as an instrument in order to solve urban cities. Is it good? It is central, uh, in the center of the city. Is, is it good that we have feasts and festivals? Uh, is it good that we promote our local artists to a certain extent? We always put it into the context of evaluation. Well, I've had a headache after yesterday's debate. Why? Uh, after yesterday's debate. Now, David uh, Kresinski uh, and Yola Banaj, Kasia already introduced them. David Kresinski and Yola Banaj, this entrance from the backyard, um, the culture, the life culture, uh, seems to prove its purpose when they, when they, act, they, they are active. And for an artist, it's better to be in a local concert. And do people want this type of participation is uh, one of their questions. So the social uh, role of culture. But what we um, received was a um, conservative picture of uh, of culture, fourteen percent, however, of, of uh, the sort of uh, recipients or participants of culture are those who can consume every everything. Uh, and one brief question and a summary. If there are no further questions, one question. Uh, very simple, one very simple uh, question. Uh, do you have concrete conclusions on uh, concrete re uh, recommendation for representatives of uh, public administration uh, after your uh, study? <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you for the question. And again, I'm faced with a daunting challenge to be brief about it. It may be over coffee. Yes, over coffee. Very briefly now. Yes, we do have a set of recommendations and we are anxious and willing to hand it over and we are uh, fit and able to, um, uh, to a for a debate. Um, now, my colleague has not uh, mentioned that uh, in a parallel way or in, uh, as part of the conclusion. The ECOC impact may evoke or trigger certain expectations, social expectations, that we can't fail to ignore. There were at least two events that happened. Culture as a theme of the debate for Wrocław 20, uh, 2020 strategy. Uh, we, don't, we don't know whether the debate was a success at all. And um, then there is the, there is one more thing. Uh, the Wrocław Congress of Culture that happened on just once. Uh, so in the context of the strategic activities, uh, summing up the this debate of Wrocław 2020, the strategy, and uh, there is probably, it is probably the first document in the city, and that was towards the end of the COC project. Now, the Wrocław theme uh, has dominated this sessions, but that's something what we should have expected. Uh, what's important for me for the evaluation, it is a sociological intervention. You were evaluating, but you were also influencing the process. Again, thank you very much, and a brief cup of coffee, and we uh, recommend at 11.